Hi, John Parsons with Reese Nichols Leewood. Today we're going to talk about investment properties, so let's get started. So we're going to start with the methods of evaluation. The first one is going to be the real estate market value. Now this goes out and this looks at what homes are selling for in the area. The next is going to be the capitalization rate. Now this is going to determine your your risk level. The lower the cap rate, the lower the risk. The next is the gross multiplier. The gross multiplier goes out and says how many years based on its present rent income before it pays for itself. The next is you're going to return on investment and is that positive or is this a negative number? We're going to need the information for the price of the house, the cash that you're going to invest, the interest rate, term of the loan, property taxes and I try to calculate the property taxes it's going to be based on the contract price which may or may not be close to the county tax price and that will clearly change after you close insurance costs HOA fees or parking lot fees if you have them personal property cost appliances next is the occupancy rate now if you're in a low turnover area then you're going to have a very high occupancy rate. If you're one that, that has an annual turnover, you're going to have a lower one. Next, we're going to look at the land value and the property value. The IRS requires that you depreciate your properties that are investment. In residential, it is 27.5 years. You cannot depreciate land, so you have to subtract the value of the land from the purchase price of the home to determine that depreciation. And this is something if you're not sure with, you can te check with a tax professional. Next, I'm going to give a simple example. We're going to start with the purchase price here of $200,000, then work for the cash invested 25% down, trying to keep these numbers simple. Then you're going to look at the loan value of $150,000, interest rate of 5.25 with a term of 30 years. Property taxes on this is $3,600. Insurance is $1,200. In this case, we're not doing any HOA fees. Personal property costs, we're going to say that the appliances cost us $25 or they're, they're valued at $2,500. We have an occupancy rate of 90% with a 10% vacancy rate. And then the land is $40,000 and the property value here that we're going to use to depreciate is $160,000 with rent of $1,800. Next, we're going to look briefly at calculating depreciation. As stated before, residential properties are going to depreciate at 27.5 years. And then your appliances and other items will depreciate at different levels. But in this case, the appliances, we're going to do a straight line depreciation of five years. Now we're going to use these numbers and plug them in to a formula that I have to calculate the before tax cash flow, the annual debt services, and the net income. The results for this example, which we're going to go into more detail on, our cash flow before taxes of $4,700, principal reduction of $2,065, and this is going to be something that's subjective to what your situation is, and I put in, just plugged in a number, of, say I have a tax rate of 25%. Then a cap rate of 7.3 with a gross multiplier of 10.3 and the return on investment at 13.5. Now let's go look at those numbers in more detail. Okay, now I'm going to go over the breakdown of numbers one more time and just point out a couple additional things that I have put on a spreadsheet. Again, you'll see that the, the purchase price is $200,000 with a cash invested of $50,000 or 25%. Then you'll see to the right middle that you have a P&I of $828. Monthly rent is $1,800 with a vacancy rate of 10%. You drop down below on the county appraisal, that's 160000 as we discussed, with a land appraisal of 40000 Interest rate is 5.25. And on this example, I put down a maintenance fee of 5%, $972. You're not going to see this anywhere else in the formulas because this is a, more of a subjective number that I put down because I expect to work on my properties over the following year. And so I put this calculation in here. And then your taxes are at $3,600 with insurance of $1,200. So let's do a breakdown of the, the numbers in more detail to show how we came up with those previous slides. Under gross income, we see here that we have $19,440. Now, as you know, the rent was $1,800. And that times 12 months comes out to $21,600. But we have on here that it was a 10% vacancy, so I've taken 90% of that to come up with the 19,440. 
Then you have your operating expenses, which is the insurance and taxes added together for 4,800, making it a net operating income of 14,640. Annual debt service is 9,940. So you have a before cash flow, which we saw before, of $4,700. Next, we're going to break down the annual debt service, and you show that your interest from your payments is $7,875. So that makes it that you have $2,065 coming down on the, or the principal of the loan. Next, we're going to determine your tax amount. So you're going to look at the net operating income minus interest depreciation, taxable income, times your tax bracket for an amount of $174. In this case, I listed appreciation down here, but I don't calculate appreciation for this class. This is something that's very subjective and there are no guarantees in the market of appreciation. So next we're going to look at the cap rate and we see that the cap rate is 7.3, a low number for the risk. Gross multiplier, so you're looking at 10.3 years roughly to make your money back. Gross multiplier will adjust depending on what your turnover or cost of the property is. And then your return on investment is 13.5. Knowing your basic numbers and a way to calculate your values will help you in the long term determine whether it is a property you want to continue investing in or not. I have a spreadsheet that I use. If you write me, I will be glad to share it with you that I just plug in these numbers and it automatically calculates everything for me. Now note that things are subjective to change in rents, change in occupancies, taxes, different expenses that may occur that you may not or may be prepared to handle. If you have any other questions about this, or any of the other investment videos, please feel free to give me a call. For more information, you can go to our website at kcretv.com. Again, this is John Parsons with Reese Nichols, a licensed agent in Kansas City, Missouri. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.